Hello everyone, I hope you all doing well. Welcome to our video. Today we are going to, are going to deal with a very interesting topic which is bilingualism and multilingualism. Before starting, let me tell you the reason behind choosing this topic. As we all know, we live in Algeria, which is a country where the majority of the population is bilingual and a great number of them are multilingual. This is why we were interested with doing this. So we invite you to watch this video to discover bilingualism and multilingualism with us. So we move to the plan. Here is the plan of our video. So we will start with an introduction, then definitions of bilingualism and multilingualism. Then we will move to the types then we will provide you with examples and we will finish with a short conclusion. So we, we start with intro introduction. In the, in the last few decades, great importance has been given to bilingualism and multilingualism since people are racing to learn as many languages as possible. For several reasons, something so, some think that speaking multiple language, languages makes them look more attractive and smart. Others, who are more strategic, assume that languages open doors and opportunities. In fact, having a second language makes one's CV look better. Moreover, mastering more than one language can even save life. However, the problem that arises is the conditions, process, and ways of learning one more language. In fact, learning a language from birth differs from learning an additional one at an advanced age or not, depending on sociolinguistic factors and views. Uh, so, in definition, Bilingualism and multilingualism are two terms that people may take as synonyms that refer to the same phenomenon. However, in sociolinguistic, these 2K terms have different definitions. So, what is bilingualism and multilingualism? Uh, the first, uh, we start with bilingualism. This term is divided into three parts. The first part is prefix B, which means having to. The second part is lingua, the Latin word which means language. And the third part is ism, it's the it's suffix that describes an action. Bilingualism is a phenomena that refers to acts of, ha of one having competence and ability of speaking and understanding two languages. The term can designate individuals as well as entire society. It can also refer to re relevant scientific research that studies the phenomena itself. Bilingualism scales from a minimum competence in two languages to an elevated level of competence, which permits the speaker to perform and arise as native-like speaker of two languages. Wardov uh, uh, defines the bilingualism student as a person who has some functional abilities in the second language. Psycholinguistics often study this phenomena to see how the brain is able to obtain two languages perfectly and how one ha and how one have the capacity to switch from one language to another e effortlessly. Additionally, bilingualism is uh, influenced by several elements, such as the age of obtaining the second language. We will talk about this in the parts of examples. Continued exhibition to the first language, relative skill in each language and the circumstances under each language is learned. And in, and in each language, bilingual person might be str strongly qualified in only one field of skills and not in the other. For example, a person might, by, might prove high, 
oral language skill and limited reading skill. And finally, being bilingual can have positive and negative consequences for language skills. So it is important to include the degree of competence in each language is learned because in educational de decisions depends on the accuracy of these conditions. It's the tables that, that show what people uh, should know uh, that children can learn several languages from birth. Uh, monolingual parents uh, who speak only one single language can raise, can raise bilingual or multilingual children. Also, bilingualism and multilingualism don't trigger, trigger speech problems or delay. Uh, also, even children with special needs can learn several languages and become bilingual or multilingual. Uh, and what people should not believe in order to be bilingual or multilingual, the child is required to be extremely smart. Also, bilingualism and multilingualism cause problems and confusion. In order to become bilingual or multilingual, watching TV is enough. A person is considered as bilingual or multilingual only of, uh, his, of he or she has perfect accent. Here is a picture that illustrates two bilingual, two bilingual kids. Also, the second picture that illustrates mom and her daughter. daughter. Uh, here is an example of a cartoon that may contribute to make a child. Bilingual and even multilingual is a case where the where the kid's mother tongue is different from the languages presented in the cartoon. That is to say, when the kid speaks French, only he will learn English by wait, by watching Dora. When the kid lives in Algeria, he speaks either Arabic or Berber, and by watching Dora, he will learn both French and English, which will probably help to speak multiple languages and then become multilingual. Here is a cartoon that illustrates how kid, kids had, can learn two languages and become bilingual. Merci d'être venu chercher le bouquet. Oh, Madame La Fontaine, venez assister à mon mariage. Je vous invite. Oh, really? I'm so happy. À tout à l'heure. Now we move to the second, which is multilingualism. Uh, second, uh, this term is also divided from two Latin words. The first part is multi, which means many, and the second part is lingua, which means language. The term is known as polyglotism. It refers to the capacity of mastering one more than uh, two languages, either by an individual or by a speech community. Multilingualism is attendance of amount of language in one country or community or city, and it is practice or the practice of three or more languages. Also, its capacity to speak various languages. In this sense, multilingualism is widely regarded as a natural state of human kind. As uh, he said, Flim, 20, uh, had Flim. adding uh, neuroscien neuroscientists discuss multilingualism in the context of the manner the brain is organized among the, those who speak multiple languages. The multilingualism has been realized in both written and verbal communicative activities that profi proficiency in one language usually tends to dominate in a multilingual setup as compared to the others. It can also be considered as the coexistence of various languages within in society. These various languages can be official or unofficial native or foreign and national or international. 
So here is diagram that show Kay, Kay's concept relates to multilingualism, multilingualism and explains how it occurs. Here it's a picture that illustrates the multilingualism girl. Also, we have here uh, a cartoon that illustrates how kid, kids can learn more than two languages and become multilingual. Ah, so simple! It's genius! Shukran! Hasanen, ila lika? Beshe edno vremen no mila i gruba v sešto to vreme. Ja, ali bi se i hotla vi. Ide klart! Kaste flaske er sommerens allerstørste hit. Sommerens allerstørste hit? Eitje! Ik heb opeens een geweldig idee, jij ook? Ai, nee, dat pull ik kopie pull ik zie. Ai, van ka, ko, ne. Now we will move to types of bilingualism and multilingualism. In fact, there are types of bilingualism and multilingualism based on age, as there are types based on skills. On one hand, types of bilingualism and multilingualism that are based on age. When talking about learning more than one language, it is important to mention the critical sensitive period, which is the period in one's life from birth to puberty, where language learning and acquisition happens easier and faster, and that simply because at this age the neurobiology of the brain is favorable for a better language learning. Once they get older and go beyond the critical period, their brain becomes slow. This is why children learn, la learn languages better than adults. So, we have early bilingualism and late bilingualism. We start with early, with early bilingualism. So it refers to the case of learning two or more languages at a very young age. Early bilingualism and multilingualism is divided into two other subtypes. So, we have the simultaneous early bilingualism and multilingualism. It refers to the process of learning two or more languages at the same time from birth due to parents speak in different language and speech community who doesn't share the parent's language. We will see examples later on. This type of bilingualism and multilingualism is usually strong since the language can be the child's mother tongue. Then we have sequential or successive bilingualism and multilingualism. It refers to the case where the child has already learned a language at the age of three or four, he starts to learn other languages. This type is also strong since it occurs during childhood. And for late bilingualism and multilingualism, it refers to the process of learning additional languages after the age of six or seven, mainly during the adolescence or puberty or adulthood. This type of bilingualism and multilingualism is consecutive and happens after the acquisition of the first language, after the critical sensitive period, and this type is what distinguishes it from early bilingualism and multilingualism. On the other hand, types of bilingualism On the other hand, types of bilingualism and multilingualism that are based on competences and skills. So, we have passive bilingualism and multilingualism, dominant, additive, subtractive bilingualism and multilingualism. We start with passive bilingualism and multilingualism, so it refers to the capacity to understand without the capacity to speak. That is to say, the level of the use of language is not very high, especially in communication. The comprehension remains good though. This may be due to lack of practice and motivation. Then, the dominant. So, it, it is when the person has a perfect mastery or almost perfectly all the language skills, especially understanding and speaking into, into 
or more languages. In this case, the individual is able to communicate fluently. Then we have the additive bilingualism and multilingualism. So it refers to the case where an individual has learned two languages or more in a balanced manner. In these situations, the person is more or less equally capable to use and communicate with these languages. And finally, we have the subtractive bilingualism and multilingualism. So it refers to the situation where the person learns an additional language regardless and to the determinant of the first language, which leads to the, de with, to the degradation and deterioration of the later while the mastery of the dominant language increases. These two concepts were created by Wallach Lambert, a Canadian researcher who has been called the father of bilingualism research. So here, um, here is the percentage of bilingualism and multilingualism during the past few decades. As we can notice, um, for bilingualism, it is 43%, for multilingualism, it is 40%, and for monolingualism, it is only 17%. So, um, we can say that the dominant one in the whole world is bilingualism. And now, we move to the examples of bilingualism and multilingualism. We start with bilingualism. An example of a bilingual is a person with the ability to speak Spanish and Italian, or a person who can speak both English and German. We have another example. A newborn in France from two Algerian parents is bilingual because his parents teach him Arabic and French at the same time. Here we have a picture which illustrates this example. Also, an Indian child who has recently arrived to England will become bilingual because he will study in an English school. We have also people of Canada are bilingual because Canada is a bilingual society which acknowledge and uses French and English as official languages and languages of interaction. We have also Nigeria is an example of bilingual society which assigns different roles to both the official language and the regional language. English has the role of official language while the regional languages have the roles of interaction. We move to the multilingualism. Most of the Kabyl Algerians are multilingual people since they speak two native languages, Arabic and Kabyl, and one or more foreign languages, for example, English and French. Also, we have some countries have official languages, but also have regional and local official languages, such as China, Mexico, and Russia. Then we have a person lives in a country influenced by other cultures and eventually other languages. He will become multilingual. Here we have a picture that shows a businessman who is obliged to learn as many languages as possible in order to communicate with customers. We have a Spanish-speaking father married to a Quebec-speaking mother with the family living in Canada where the community language and primary language of education are English and French. If their child goes to a Canadian medium school from a young age, then multilingualism will be the result. Uh, here we have uh, some uh, multilingual countries. For example, Algeria has Arabic as an official language, French and Berber language. Egypt 
has Arabic and as an official language, English, French, and Egyptian Arabic. Chad has Arabic and French as official languages and more than 100 African languages. We deal with um, the last example, a kid who was born in a family where his parents speak Arabic at the age of five. His parents died in an accident, then he moved to live in Orphalina where the language spoken was French, so the kid learned French. After a few years, an English family adopted the kid and took him to live in England, then he learned English. To conclude, there is no doubt that bilingualism and multilingualism have much in common. Both are defined as the ability in an individual to use at least one language in addition to the mother tongue or in a community or a country, the use or existence of more than one language. But similarity does not mean identity. The distinction between the two is becoming increasingly apparent. Thanks for watching. We have we hope you enjoyed our video and you learned at least something. Please don't forget to comment and share.